This video is sponsored by MPB, the world's largest online platform to sell and trade used photo and video equipment. Apparently, Canon didn't stop at C70, and last time a set C70 was small. Really small cinema camera, which is a C70. Check this out. R5C. From this angle, it just looks like another R5, R6, or another EOS R. But check the back. It actually stuck out so much. This is almost like what Panasonic done to their S1 and become S1 Edge because it just got a exhaust cooling fan at the back. But this is so much more because this doesn't need any external recorder. This do 8K internally. Raw. Canon Raw. Yep, it do 8K Raw internally. Record into a CF Express card. Other than RAW, it can output RAW as well, it got RAW center and light, and also all other XFAVC and some other MP4 10-bit, 8-bit as well. In fact, it can do 8K 50 or 60 FPS, but with some limitation. Actually, the limitation about shooting RAW with 50 or 60 FPS is that it takes external power to drive the lens. So, um, another thing is that you can see that this is a 120 8GB CF Express card shooting raw light you only got 15 minutes of uh, uh, available space for footage but if you change it to 50 FPS it will tell you that it needs uh, external power to work the lens the fact is you can still shoot it will tell you just the lens doesn't work what doesn't work you don't even have the aperture value. You can't drive the aperture. You can't drive auto focusing. You can't drive IS, and you can't even do manual focusing because focus by wire. The focusing need power as well. So of course you can use an adapter and use a manual lens. Then it doesn't matter at all. Forgot to tell you that after I switch to a raw 50 fps, it only got seven minutes of available shooting uh, duration with a 128GB CF Express card which is pretty expensive as well you just need a power bank with USB-C PD then you can use your lens even with IS now this is really really interesting camera so it's so different than the C70 last time C70 it just looks like a smaller cinema camera this look like EOS R. This looks like mirrorless camera, but it is cinema camera. You might have heard already that it got a um, cooling system at the back. I mean, if I cover this, this looks like any other EOS camera. It's exactly the same thing. This bit just feel exactly like other EOS camera. The grip feel exactly the same as well. It's really great grip. And it's just this bit sticking out. So yeah, this bit this look exactly like USR. And Canon take hybrid to literally level. At first, this might look quite messy and confusing, but now start with, let's start with the power button. Video and photo mode. And you can see the video mode um, have uh, white text and photo mode have gray text. What's the meaning of that is that on the marking, on the buttons, you can see one is for photo and one is for video or cinema, cinema camera. So white text is cinema and gray is photo. So for example, actually a lot of buttons are <laughs> just the same thing. Media and playback, same thing. Media is for the terminology of um, a cinema camera, playback like a photo camera. Um, display and info, <laughs> same thing. This is totally different. Q menu for photo, but then for cinema camera, it doesn't have a Q menu, so this is a menu. Um, actually, it is quite funny that at the cinema camera uh, interface, it actually got two menu buttons, <laughs> one here and one here. For photo, this is quick menu, and then for this is menu. So you can see the <laughs> interface, this is just any, just like any other uh, Canon camera back to the DSLR age. And when you turn it off, it actually turn off from the photo first and then turn on with cinema interface. A uh, touch menu here, quite useful. You can touch and change ISO from here. 
It is just interesting that all the buttons at the back are exactly the same place, exactly the same button on the R5. This goes to the top panel as well. Only difference they change the on-off button on the R5 to photo and video mode and off button on the R5C. It's not too long ago we have R5 and AK, that was like wow crazy. And then we have C70 and then now we have R5C. It's going just so quick, just like my RX100 Mark VI. I was thinking it would be good if I can sell this and then get set V1, that's much better. That's why we have this sponsor, mpb.com. It can't be easier to sell it to MPB, free up some fun and for some upgrade. I just actually sold my original uh, Rode Wireless Go, the original one, for 63 pounds. That is not bad because I just set it up everything here. I don't even have to get up from my chair. I can show you with the RX100, just put an RX100 Mark VI, just choose it from here. Choose the item condition. This, I would think this is good condition. Actually, at the same time, I can choose an item to buy as well. I would want to upgrade it to set V1. Just a few seconds, you get an instant quote for selling this, and then how much you have to pay. I just have to pay £84 for a secondhand set V1. And you can check out the condition of that set V1. You can check out all the photos, the condition. Just a few minutes, you don't even have to get up from your chair and they will connect this for free. They will check the item and when everything is agreed, they will pay you in just a few days. So you can always try out, see how much will your old gear work with an instant quote. Also, it don't just has a photo mode and it don't just take just photo. It actually got 12 FPS mechanical shutter or 20 FPS electronic shutter. Actually the same burst rate as R5. <laughs> Interesting. Probably use the same sensor or whatever. Now the sensor is still the photo 4x3, not 4x3, 3x2 aspect ratio. It's not like the C70. C70 actually got a wider aspect ratio, which I don't remember now, but it's wider, it, yeah. <laughs> So look at other thing on the camera, it got a flip screen, come on! <laughs> oh, this is really important, isn't it? Flip screen! And this is the exhaust of the cooling system. Uh, whenever you turn on the video, of course you can customize it. Whenever you turn on the video, it turns on. When you turn to the photo, it turns off. So this is just for video, it's only, only available in the video, uh, the cinema OS, I guess. The photo OS doesn't even have a driver for the, for the cooling fan, maybe. Well, because it has a cooling fan, I feel like I have to, I should, I must test it, of course, I think. And I put it in the oven, obviously. And I've done this before with the GoPro 10 review as well. Because in UK, it's pointless to test it under 20 degrees Celsius indoor temperature. And it would be wasteful to turn it up my heater into uh, 30 degrees. So there we go. I simulate a hot climate around 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. And of course, I test it with shooting raw internal recording, AK. Because the battery only probably lasts less than half an hour. So I give it a USB power. And because the CF Express card would be full every 15 minutes, so I will have to format the card and start the recording again. Actually, I feel kind of silly doing this test because of course it, it should work. So yeah, it works. It doesn't overheat at all. After an hour, I call it a day and then at the end of the test, the cooling fan isn't really in that high speed anyway. So yeah, it, at the end, it kind of silly. I know it should work but just have to be done I guess. With the pause more interesting is there's time code uh, for professional video of course. Uh, my headphone doesn't really have to talk about this. Uh, USB-C and too bad HDMI is the micro HDMI. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why really. I really hope there's a full-size HDMI. You know every people, everyone who have to use HDMI hates this. USB-C, this is a really great thing because if you look at here, if I plug in the USB-C, it shows you um, 
USB PD. Now you can be, it's, I mean, not you, it will be powered with USB C. And more so when you can just take out the battery as well. Look at that. Ta -da! So you can even hot, hot swap a battery during recording. Now I'm recording. Look, see, no hand. Look at that. Hot swap. And then you can, like, oh, I put, put this away. Dual power, I love that. I mean, for um, for video shooting, dual power is always great. It uses the same battery as other USR. Uh, good thing is that you don't have to buy new if you got quite a lot of them. The bad thing is um, the, ba the battery life is really bad. And today, when I shoot this, um, yeah, it's it almost only power for half an hour or something for shooting video. That is quite ridiculous, to be honest. So yeah, you probably would need to buy a USB-C power delivery power bank. It also support UVC. So you can use this for live stream or for just Zoom or FaceTime on your computer. Really cinematic Zoom meeting, work from home. Buy this for work from home. Great. Now I have actually shot my last video entirely with the R5C. One thing I love that it do perform just like a video camera or cinema camera, especially the direct custom white balance button. There's no need to fiddle around with menu, quick menu or whatever just to find the custom white balance button. Also the level of customization, I can customize a button to toggle false color. Just one button to toggle it on and off. It is so quick. And of course, it has the Canon famous dual pixel AF with face tracking. And this is the first Canon cinema camera to have IAF as well. I have even tested on the 50mm f1.2, the amount of shallow depth of view. Curiously, it should have a head detection, but when I turn around, it doesn't show it on the screen that it has a head detection. Especially last time when I test a C70, it do show it on the screen that it detect a head. But even though it don't show it on the screen, it do manage to focus on me even if my face is not facing the camera. Now I only have very little time with this camera so I can't do more tests. I'm not sure is it because it is stuck there or because the camera actually doesn't have proper support with the lens. Interestingly, if I switch it to photo mode, it do clearly show that it detect my head, even if I'm not facing the camera. Looks like it performs better compared to when it is in video mode. By the way, in photo mode, it also supports to detect animal and vehicle, which doesn't available in the video mode. But this is almost like lip picking because it do works extremely well in real life. So if you really want to use this for vlogging, yes, it can. It is actually really not much heavier than the R5, as I mentioned. So, and uh, even though it doesn't have in poly stabilization, the lens IS of Canon is always so good. Back then, when I was in digital web using 5D, there's not such thing as in poly stabilization. And the lens IS, that's great. This, this is my lunch, by the way. Now, what's the difference from C70? The most obvious is C70 has a built-in ND and XLR input. But I think the main issue of R5C is the less than an hour battery life. You will probably need a USB-C PD power bank all the time if you don't want to feel like using a Sony A7. Still, I don't expect Canon to release something like this at all. This is the most silly EOS R camera and this is the most mirrorless cinema Canon camera, if that makes sense.